Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a loose tiny storefront which was inspired by a picture I saw. I love how simple and tiny it is and I personally love the style of the roof so I made my own interpretation and composition so feel free to play around with yours if you're going to give this a go. I start out by sketching out the building since it's the main feature of this painting. I want to make sure that it fits nicely within the frame of the paper that I have. So I just simplified the shapes and this way it's much easier for me to erase and nudge the position if I need to. Once I'm satisfied with how it's being placed, I start adding the details that I'd like to include. And this is completely up to you. I just added a door with an awning. You can also change the shape of the awning if you want. And I'm also going to add a small window and wavy lines for the roof. This is something that you can customize for your own paintings, just like the other decorative features that I'm going to include. So that's basically it for the storefront. Now I'm going to add the decorative elements. I'm going to add plants because I find that plants just make any building look cuter. But since I'm comfortable with painting most of the plants freehand, I just drew out the pots so I can space them out according to how I like them and the rest will follow as I paint them later on. Since I was thinking of making a blue storefront, I also thought about having an orange tree next to the storefront to give a nice complementary color to the composition, and I'm just going to draw it out by framing the tree around the storefront. Once I'm happy with how the tree is being laid out, I'm going to erase parts of the storefront which are behind the greeneries. Then I'm going to add additional tiny elements like an open sign and also a mini board on the side. You can also add any other features you want. I also decided to add small stones outside of the door or you can add different pathways or even stairs for yours. By the way, if you don't want to draw your own and you like the composition that I have here, I'll also have this outline available in my coffee shop with the link in my description box. But yeah, that's the outline so far, so now I'm just going to go over the colors. Firstly, this is Aquarius Green by Roman Schmal, Azo Yellow by M. Graham, Cobalt Blue Hue by Holbein, Paints Grey Bluish by Schminka, Ivory Black by Holbein, Windsor Red by Windsor & Newton Quinciana by Daniel Smith Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith and Red Violet by San Elia. I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins Derwent Drawing Pencil Chinese White and my Sakura Micron Pen 0.1 in sepia. I'm going to mix up an orange by using Quinciana red and yellow together and I'm just going to paint circles on the tree that I've drawn out before. I'm going to make each of the oranges quite large and you'll see that in comparison to the storefront itself it's very massive but I want this to be the main decorative element and I just find that the orange will look really cute with the painting which is why I'm accentuating them this way but of course you can reduce the size for your own if you don't like them to be this big. Next I'm going to use a mix of Aquarius Green with Azo Yellow and I'm going to use the tip of my brush and angle it randomly to create leaf shapes and I'm going to do this in patches so these look like the highlights or the lighter parts of the tree. While the surface is still wet, I'm going to also create a darker green by mixing Aquarius Green with the Cobalt Blue. And I like to place the darker colors in between so these look like the shadow parts or the leaves which are behind the yellow ones that I've just painted. And I'm going to let the paint naturally travel across each other so some parts might have a softer blend than others 
but I'm still trying to create a more or less cohesive texture to this tree while leaving out some white negative space here and there so it doesn't look too bulky. While doing this, I like to vary the ratio, so if I want a really light green, I would add a lot of azo yellow, and if I want an even darker green, I'd use a very thick consistency of a mix between the Aquarius green and the cobalt blue. I'm going to let the tree dry for now and I'm going to move on to painting the branches and the tree trunk. For this I used a mixture of paints grey bluish with quinciana and I used more quinciana in this mix first so it's not too dark and I'm just basically going to use this to paint the base color. As for the smaller branches, you can always switch to a smaller brush in order to get really nice delicate lines. I'm also going to paint a really fine branch here in order to break up the area and I just find that this gives a bit more dimension to the tree as well. Using the same mix, now I added more paints grey bluish into the mixture to create an even darker brown and I used this to paint one side of the tree trunk as well as the finer branches to give a rounder form to the tree trunk. Once the greens are completely dry, I make an even darker green by mixing paints grey bluish with Aquarius green and I'm going to add on these darker values in certain places to further build the form of the tree. While doing this, I like to add on additional leaves in random places as well that's quite scattered. So they look like individual tiny leaves, especially around the edges of the tree. I'm also going to add more loose leaves around empty branches as well so the placement look more delicate. This paper that I use tend to make the colors fade quite a bit because it absorbs the paint a different way. So whenever that happens and depending on the state of your painting, you can always layer on the same color to add the level of vibrancy, which is what I was doing with the oranges. Next, I'm going to be painting smaller plants. For this, I first use a mixture of Aquarius green with yellow, but for the darker green, I use a mix of Aquarius green with cobalt blue, and I just keep on increasing the cobalt blue in the ratio to create the darker colors, so the greens in general here are a bit cooler in temperature. For this next one, I'm going to add tiny little flowers using the red violet, but you can also choose any other colors that you like. As for the greens, I like to use a more yellow green for this, and for the darker green, I just use Aquarius green by itself, but I use a thicker consistency if I want to darken the value. Once I'm done, I add a thicker consistency of the red violet and use this to layer on more of the flower details. For the next one, I'm going to use a very bluish green by mixing Aquarius green with cobalt blue, but I just play with the consistency in order to get the lighter values and the darker values. I think you guys have a fairly good idea of how I mix the greens. You can keep playing around with the different ratios of these colors to create different shades of green and paint on different plants on the pots, so I'm just going to keep painting more of them until I fill them all. 
As for the browns that I'm going to use to paint, the pots, the bench, the frame of the window, the door, and the frame of the board at the bottom, I like to use Quinciana as the base color. Then if I want to darken and mute the color for a really dark wooden brown, I would add Paints gray bluish. If I want to lighten it, I would add buff titanium. And if I want it to look a bit more golden, then I would add a little bit of yellow in the mix. Just like the leaves, I'll play around with different ratios and mixes in order to get varied tones of browns or terracotta color for the pots. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I want the store to be blue, so for this I use cobalt blue hue with a little bit of buff titanium to make the color slightly more pastel and I'm just going to paint this all over the storefront. For parts which are hidden behind the plants and the pots in the bench, I want to add a darker blue. So for this, I just added paints gray bluish to make a richer darker blue and I'm just going to paint it behind the plants and the bench. I want the awning to be red and white, but as for the red, I don't want it to be overly too vibrant, so I added a little bit of ivory black. As for the front side, I use a thicker consistency of the same mix, so it looks a bit darker and it separates the shapes. For the glass on the door and the glass window, I first started out with a thin consistency of ivory black with a bit of paints gray bluish. I paint them on very thinly because I don't want it to be too dark and I also try to create a glass texture by painting diagonal lines and shapes across the glass. While I wait for the windows to dry off, I'm going to move on to paint the roof. I'm going to use the same mixes as the pots with Quinciana as the base. Then I'm going to add a tiny bit of paint gray bluish in order to mute the color slightly. I'll also paint in between the trees where the roof is peaking and that'll be the base color of the roof. For the lining underneath the roof, I use buff titanium with a bit of color from the roof still on my brush. To darken the roof color, I add more paints gray bluish in the ratio and I'm going to line the bottom of the layers for the roof. And as for the shadows underneath the roof, I use a thin consistency of ivory black. For the cost shadow on the roof underneath the tree, I added more paints gray bluish to the previous mixture and I just dot this around to create a similar texture to what I did for the tree. And I decided to glaze some quinciana to parts of the roof while leaving some of the base color showing through with also the dark version of this color to suggest more depth in the curves of the roof. I'm going to go over the curvy shadows again using a very thick consistency with more paints gray bluish in the mix to darken the color even more since the color ended up fading a lot. I'll also use this to repaint the cast shadow as well as adding lines to separate the roof tiles. <laughs> 
For the lining underneath the roof, I use a similar color with added ivory black to add the cast shadow. And as for the cast shadow on the storefront itself, I used a bit of paint gray bluish with ivory black. I tried to add more shadows behind the pots though because this will be darker than the rest of the storefront. With the same color as before, I'm just going to add additional lines and fill in some parts of the diagonal shapes to add on to the glass texture. Here I'm just going to increase the vibrancy using red by itself without the added ivory black and I'm just going to keep on increasing the vibrancy. As for the whites of the awning, I use a really light consistency of ivory black to add the shadows. For the board, I want to create a black chalkboard sort of color so I mixed Aquarius green with ivory black. For the stones outside of the storefront, I used the color which I already mixed on my palette with a thin consistency, but I basically want to use colors like buff titanium by itself and something that is sort of like a muted blue-gray color and also reddish-brown from the mixtures that I made from the roof. I also want to add a bit of cross texture in between the stones and the ground in general, and for this I used a mix of azure yellow with Aquarius green. After that, I basically want to start lining the painting to clean out the edges and to give it more of an illustrative feel. You can either do this with a liner brush, but I found that it took too long for me so I just continued with my pen. After adding the outline, I kind of felt like the storefront is a bit floating, so I decided to add shadows. I first used paint gray bluish with ivory black, then I decided to also add a muted purple from a mix of red and paint gray bluish with a bit of brown from the roof colors. You can keep building up the colors if you need to. I added more darker colors on the way to give it a weathered look so it's more textured and old looking. Then for the roof, I also use a white pencil to add on highlights. And I'm not sure if you can see it through the video, but I like how the pencil textures look. But of course, this is optional and you can dress your painting according to your own taste. 
So that's it for this painting. It was a really fun illustration to make and I really like the idea of painting more buildings in the future maybe. Like usual, all the list of tools that I use for this painting as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!